I have been coding for more than 10 years now and I spent last 6 years working as a software engineer mostly at big tech companies like Amazon. In this video, I will share 9 things I wish I knew when I started programming in 2014. Knowing these 9 things would have made my coding and software engineering journey lot easier. Number 1. You don't need to know everything. The thing about programming and software engineering in general is that there is simply way too much to know. Every day, there is some new technology, framework or library and it's easy to get distracted trying to keep up with everything. But it's okay to not know everything. In every company I've joined, I didn't know most of the tools I would be using until I actually started working there. Before my first job at Morgan Stanley as a full stack developer, I didn't know React, Redux or Flask. Before my second job at Amazon as a backend and machine learning engineer, I didn't know AWS, Transformers and TypeScript. The point is, software engineering is less about knowing a specific tool and more about willingness to learn new things whenever it's required. 2. Learn one programming language When I first started programming, I wanted to learn all the popular programming languages and tools. I thought, the more languages I know, the better programmer I will be. As a result, I constantly switched between languages. I would watch some Java tutorial on one day, Python tutorials the next day, and some JavaScript tutorial few weeks later. I felt like I was learning a lot, but my knowledge was superficial at best. I wasn't really getting anywhere. For example, I was able to write simple code in Java using if-else and for loop, but didn't really understand how the JVM worked, how memory is managed, or how multi-threading works in Java. Looking back, I wish I had focused on just one primary programming language from the start and went deep into it rather than learning little bit of everything. It would have saved me a lot of time and effort, and I would have progressed much faster in my programming journey. So if you are just starting out, my advice is to pick one language that aligns with your goals and in interest and commit to mastering it, whether it's Java, JavaScript, Python or something else entirely. Becoming an expert in one language will give you a solid foundation to build upon. And trust me, once you have that foundation, learning other languages becomes much easier. Depth is more important than breadth when it comes to programming languages. 3. Don't compare with others As a human being, we have a tendency to compare ourselves with others. And this happens a lot in programming. When I started college, I knew nothing about coding, but some of my peers had already been programming for two years. Because of this, I constantly compared myself to others and felt like I was never going to be as good as them. I spent too much time worrying about how I was doing compared to others instead of focusing on improving my own skills. But here is the thing I learned. No matter how good you are, there will always be someone more talented and smarter than you. And everyone comes from a different background. For example, some people started coding at age 10, but others didn't even have a laptop until they were 20 but they still made it as a software engineer. The truth is, everyone's journey is unique. Don't feel like you have to keep up with everybody else. No one is better than another person. The only person you need to be better than is the person you were yesterday. So don't compare, don't compete. Just create, learn, build, and enjoy your journey. Next, you won't remember everything. When I first started coding, I was obsessed with trying to remember every little detail. But the truth is, there is only so much information you can hold in your brain. Unless you repeatedly practice or review what you have learned, you will forget it in a few weeks. That's how our brain works. Over the last 10 years, I've learned 8 programming languages including PHP. But if you ask me right now to write a for loop in PHP, I wouldn't be able to since I've forgotten most of it. You don't need to remember every single function, every single syntax or every single algorithm. You can always google it, read the documentation, go to Stack Overflow or just ask AI tools like ChatGPT. In the end, it's not about what to remember, it's about how you use the knowledge you have and how you acquire the knowledge you need. So don't try to remember everything. 5. Learn by doing Most people don't realize it early in their programming journey, but the best way to learn how to code isn't by watching tutorials, reading articles, or buying textbooks. It's by writing a lot of code. I made the same mistake and spent first few years watching tutorials after tutorial without writing much code myself. There is nothing wrong in watching tutorials, reading articles, or buying textbooks. But the real learning starts when you write code on your own. It's not always easy and it can get frustrating at times. And most importantly, it's going to take time. But like everything else, the more you do, the better you get. So once you have learned the basics, try to write as much code as possible. This could be through building projects or solving problems on platforms like lead code. You should also try to read a lot of code from experienced programmers. Reading code exposes you to different coding styles, techniques and best practices that you may not learn otherwise. Next, don't just be a programmer. As programmers, it's easy to get caught up in the technical details, the syntax, the frameworks and the libraries and overlook the real reason behind our code. For the first few years, I used to believe that a programmer is someone who is just coding all the time. But after a few years, I realized that programming is less about writing code and more about solving problems. Every line of code we write has a specific purpose and programming is just a tool using which we can solve real world problems. That's why it's important to see ourselves as a problem solver rather than just a programmer. Having a problem solving mindset 
lets us focus on the bigger picture and helps us spend more time thinking about the solution than writing code. Once you know what problem to solve and how to solve it, coding becomes a lot easier. So don't just write code for the sake of writing code. Write code that solves a problem. 7. Communication skills are important. If there is one skill that can have a significant impact on your career, it's communication skills. Just being good at the technical stuff isn't enough. Being able to communicate your ideas and solutions effectively is what separates the successful programmers from the rest. This is something I didn't learn in school and ignored in college and I paid a heavy price. Poor communication skills lowered my self-confidence and made me hesitate to ask for help. During interviews, I found it hard to explain my solutions and once I started working, I remained silent during meetings. But a few years back, it hit me that communication is a huge part in building a successful programming career. Since then, I have made a conscious effort to improve my communication skills by actively seeking chances to practice presenting my ideas, joining in team discussions, and getting better at talking and writing. Next, ask questions. I know it can be intimidating to admit that you don't know something, but no one expects you to have all the answers. When I first started programming, I was too shy to ask for help. I thought that asking for help was a sign of weakness, that it meant I wasn't smart enough or good enough to figure things out on my own. I would spend hours, sometimes even days, banging my head against a problem, determined to solve it myself. But everyone needs help sometimes. Asking questions is how we learn, grow, and become better at what we do. And the best part is, most people are nice and always ready to help. I've never had any Anyone refuse to help me. People actually like to help. Remember, the only silly question is the one that goes unasked. So don't hesitate to ask your colleagues, mentors, or even strangers on the internet for help. Chances are they have been in your shoes before and are happy to share what they know. And the last, challenge yourself. When I started competitive coding in college, I only solved easy problems. While it felt good seeing my solutions accepted, but I wasn't really getting better at coding. Learning to code is like building muscles. In the gym, if you only lift a lightweight dumbbell, you won't get stronger. To grow your muscle fast, you need to slowly increase the weight over time. The same principle applies to coding. To get better at coding, you need to do harder tasks and solve bigger problems. If you are not pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone, you are not growing. But don't try to take on the hardest tasks right away. Instead, try doing tasks that are a bit harder than what you are used to and slowly increase the difficulty level. For example, if you can comfortably solve lead code easy problems, try medium ones. If you can build a simple application, think about how do you handle if millions of people start using it. When you push yourself to solve difficult problems, you are not just solving the problem, you are leveling up your skills, expanding your knowledge, and building your confidence. So, which of these 9 programming lessons were most relatable to you? Let me know in the comments. Also, subscribe to my newsletter, AlgoMaster, where I post about the important coding and system design topics every week. I hope you found this video informative. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I will see you in the next one.